everybody, Swayze here, and in today's video, I review the newly restyled 2023 Chevy Colorado Trail Boss. You guys have all complained about off-roaders getting way too expensive. Well, this is Chevy's answer to that. <music> Hey everyone, before we dive into today's video, I want to tell you about Octane Coffee Company. It is the car themed coffee company with a variety of different roasts paired with iconic names. You've got Big Block, Race Gas, The Goat. It's perfect for early morning cars and coffee or cruises down the canyon. It is the coffee for all car enthusiasts. Pick up your bag at OctaneCoffeeCompany.com, link is down below, and get 10% off your first order using promo code Octane10. Now back to the video. Okay, so about the Colorado. Now this is the third generation that was released here in 2023. It's kind of hard to believe that the first gen came out all the way back in 2004. And this is a mid-sized pickup truck that competes with a pretty crowded field. We're talking Toyota Tacoma, Nissan Frontier, Jeep Gladiator, Ford Ranger, Honda Ridgeline to a certain extent. And I'm sure I've missed a couple there as well. But today we're gonna to be discussing what has changed from the prior generation. And first off, we're gonna start with styling. So starting off with the front end, as you can see, the front end is entirely different from the outgoing generation. Now, this one being the Trail Boss, you only get halogen headlamps as standard and incandescent light bulbs for the turn signals. You cannot get LED headlights as an option on the Trail Boss, which is a little bit odd because the LED kind of make it a little bit more modern, kind of up to the 21st century standards. That said, these are automatic high beams and they're automatic headlamps as well. So as it gets dark, these will turn on, which is kind of nice, but I wish they had LEDs as an option. Now, moving across the front end, you'll notice that this front grille and bumper is pretty massive. It's all a piece of black plastic, but they did make it a little bit different by adding these different angles and these shapes and the designs. It makes it look pretty attractive overall, pretty menacing, muscular. And of course they did this because, well, first off, this is the affordable trim level, but second off, this is gonna be a little bit more durable than just a piece of painted plastic. And it's probably easier to replace as well. Moving down below, you've got these fake air inlets over here, but they look pretty cool. And then you've got this kind of odd piece of painted plastic that doesn't look anything like the color of the vehicle. This is glacier blue metallic, by the way, but uh, it's also odd that it's down here and it's painted because this is gonna get scuffed up pretty easily. So not sure why exactly they added this painted piece, but it does look pretty good. It's just a little bit of an odd choice. And down here, you do have an air dam that is removable because if you take this off road, you're probably gonna scrape it. You also have recovery hooks on the driver and the passenger side, which is nice. Now moving above the grill, you've got this pretty good looking hood. I mean, it's very muscular, lots of shapes and angles to it. I like the design that they chose with it. And overall, the design of the Colorado is pretty attractive. It looks meaner than the outgoing generation, which looked a little bit smoother, a little bit softer. I mean, coming over to the side, you got this large fender flare that bulges out. And then this one being the Trail Boss, it does sit a little bit wider than your standard Colorado because again, this is the off-road trim and they've got this widened fender flare over here that sticks out. Looks very beefy, looks really good. Matches the exterior styling of this vehicle. Now coming over to the side, you'll notice a little bit more of that body line that stretches on the front and back fender. And then one that's kind of two thirds down the door, which looks pretty good. Now in terms of length of this vehicle, you're looking at 213 inches long, which is very similar to the competition like the Frontier and the Tacoma. One thing I will say though is as of 2023, there's only one configuration of the Colorado. So unlike the other competitors where you can get a short cab and then a long bed setup, this one doesn't have that. There's only one setup and that is this four door, five foot bed. It's actually a little bit over five feet. And Chevy says this is the best seller. So that's why they're only sticking to this and that way they're able to keep costs a little bit down. Not sure if you like that or not because I'm sure some people would wanna get the shorter cab and the longer bed, especially if they're using this as like a work truck. But even the work truck trim level comes with this exact same setup. Now moving towards the back, you've got this Trail Boss sticker. And as you can see, again, a little bit more of that fender flare sticking out. Looks almost like a Baja pre-runner type of looking truck, which looks really good. Uh, coming to the back, you've got these taillights here that are, again, not LEDs. You can't even get that as an option. But you do have this little bumper step over here that you can use to get into and out of the truck bed. Coming towards the back, the tailgate has Chevrolet embossed inside of the sheet metal, which looks really good. Overall, this truck sits a little bit wider, a little bit taller than the outgoing Colorado. Now, while we're back here, let's show off the tailgate. Now, this one comes with the easy lift and open system that is an option on the Trail Boss. And then this particular vehicle comes with the option lockable storage. So as you can see here, uh, just looks like a regular tailgate, but if you open up these little flaps, 
on the left and right side, you'll open up this lockable storage compartment, which also has a drain plug, but it is water sealed. So you have this little seal over here. So if it does get rainy or anything like that, nothing inside this compartment is gonna get wet, which is a really smart feature. I like that uh, vehicles are innovating in, the, in terms of closed storage because, you know, trucks aren't necessarily known for lots of closed storage. And this is a great example of that by utilizing just the several inches of space inside of the tailgate. Now for the next cool feature, I had to use two hands, but if you lift up the tailgate, and you slide the cable into this notch over here, you get this kind of weird shape. And what that's meant to do is extend this a little over five foot bed into pretty much over a six foot bed because you can lay two by four or sheetrock flat on those wheel wells and it will be able to balance over here and then you can strap it into place. So this is a very smart feature to make this small truck bed a little bit larger. And Chevy says this thing can support upwards of 500 pounds in this type of position. Now, another cool feature about this tailgate is you've got this measuring tape embossed into the top of the tailgate itself. So if you're cutting sheetrock or plywood, you can get precise measurements using the tailgate itself. Next up, my particular tester comes with the optional spray in bed liner. It's unfortunate that it doesn't come standard, but you can get it directly from the factory. And Chevy says you can get upwards of 17 different tie down points in the truck bed of the Colorado, which I believe is a class leader in its segment. Okay, now let's talk about all the different trim levels of the Colorado. There's actually about five. You've got the work truck, the WT, the LT. There's the trail boss, which is the third trim level sits right in the middle of the pack. You've got the Z71, which is kind of the luxurious version and the super off-road capable ZR2. There's actually kind of a sixth one, which is the ZR2 AEV Bison Edition, which is the most extreme off-road pickup truck, but that one kind of sits in a different category. One thing to keep in mind about the Trail Boss trim level is it's essentially the off-road version of the work truck. So you don't actually get some of the creature comforts that you would expect from this being the mid trim level because this one prioritizes off-road capability over you know some of the things like LED headlights and tail lamps and stuff that I'm gonna be talking about in today's video. So just keep that in the back of your mind as you're watching this review. So speaking of off-road, let's talk about all the off-road goodies that come on the Trail Boss. First off, starting with the tires. So this one comes with a 32 inch or so setup. You're looking at Goodyear Wrangler Territory AT. These are all-terrain tires, and these are wrapped around 18 inch wheels. The exact measurements are 265, 65 R18s, and they have, you know, quite a good amount of tread over here on the side. So as you're rock crawling, you should be able to get pretty good traction. On the back, you have the exact same size. And I like that you have this gloss black look to the wheels. These are exclusive to the Trail Boss trim level. They look different than all the others. And I think it matches the exterior, especially in this glacier blue metallic color. You also get a two inch factory lift on the Trail Boss, which gets you upwards of nine and a half inches of ground clearance. Now, if you choose the ZR2 trim level, you can get upwards of 10.7 inches, but 9.5 is pretty good. Chevy says you have an additional one and a half inches of front suspension and one inch of rear suspension travel as compared to the standard collar. Colorado. Now, every single Trail Boss comes with all-wheel drive, so you have a two-speed transfer case, and you've got a rear locking differential. Now, this is a G80 automatic rear locker, and so there's no actual button to activate on the inside. This thing will automatically activate when it notices some slip. So it's a little bit different than your standard rear locker where you activate it on the inside, but the G80 automatic has been used in lots of different vehicles. I think it works pretty well overall. One thing to mention is you still have a fully boxed-in frame. You've also got leaf springs over here here in the back and we'll talk about how those feel when you're driving down the road. Every single Trail Boss also comes with hill descent control. So it's essentially an off-road cruise control as you're going off-roading, you can set a speed and will maintain that speed as you're going downhill. You also get four different drive modes on the inside. Now out of the gate, you don't get front or mid skid plates on the Trail Boss, but Chevy does offer that from the factory if you choose it as an option. Okay, next up, let's talk powertrain. And this is probably the most controversial part of the new Colorado. You can no longer get the turbo diesel, you can't get the V6. There's actually just one engine option on every single Colorado and it's a four cylinder. It's actually a 2.7 liter turbocharged four cylinder with three different types of outputs depending on the trim level. Now, if you get the work truck trim level, it's called the turbo and it produces 237 horsepower and 260 pound feet of torque. If you step up to the trail boss, you get the turbo plus engine, which produces pretty healthy figures. We're talking 310 horsepower, 
391 pound-feet of torque. It'll do 0 to 60 in just about seven seconds. Now you can pick the turbo high output version, which comes on the ZR2, and that one has the same horsepower, 310, but its torque gets bumped up to 430 pound-feet of torque. Now this is a little bit controversial because people don't necessarily trust a four-cylinder in a pickup truck, especially a turbocharged four. But one thing to keep in mind is Chevy has used this engine in its full-size Chevy Silverado for the past few years. I think it's been known to be a relatively reliable engine overall. Now all of that power is sent through an eight-speed automatic transmission. And as I mentioned earlier, you can either get rear wheel drive or four wheel drive, but the Trail Boss only comes standard with four wheel drive, which makes sense because it's the off-road trim level. In terms of fuel economy, it's not bad. The Trail Boss gets 17 in the city, 21 on the highway. Now, in terms of towing capacity, the Colorado is up there amongst its competition. We're talking 7,700 pounds and payload is actually pretty impressive. We're talking 1,507 pounds, which is almost full-size pickup truck territory. Okay, now let's jump inside the Trail Boss and talk interior. But before we do that, I briefly want to show you the key. This is your standard Chevy GMC key. Key, you got your lock, unlock, you got your panic button. Now you don't have any type of remote start functionality. You can use an app to turn the vehicle on and off, but then after a couple years, you do have to pay for a subscription. I believe you can get the remote start as a dealer accessory add-on. The other thing the Trail Boss is missing is you can't keep the key in your pocket and approach the vehicle to unlock the door. There's no sensor over here on the door handle, so you can't lock and unlock the vehicle by just touching it and keeping the key in your pocket. You're gonna have to physically pull the key out and hit the lock and unlock button. That's a little bit different because a lot of modern vehicles have that as a feature. Okay, jumping inside the Colorado Trail Boss, let's talk about the interior quality and some of the features. Now, first off, you'll see that the interior is a lot of black plastic. And that again has to do with the fact that this is the off-road version of the work truck. So this is supposed to be a little bit more durable, stand the test of time a little bit better than you know leather surfaces or anything like that. Starting off with the door panel, hard touch plastic all the way up top. You do have a black plastic door handle with automatic lock and unlock. And then you have this kind of interesting trim piece that goes along the door all the way to the grab handle. And then you'll notice there is some camo inside the grab handle as well. That's kind of the theme color of the Trail Boss is black and gray camo. I will complain that where you rest your elbow as you're driving down the road is a little bit of a harder touch plastic material or rubberized material. I wish it was a little bit softer. I think that's something that Chevy could improve. Moving forward from that section, you have your automatic windows and mirror controls. You do have one touch automatic up down on the driver window. And then you have this interesting textured trim piece that outlines some of the grab handle as well. Below that, you kind of have this small storage compartment and then another storage compartment that technically serves as a cup holder, but you could fit other stuff there as well. I do feel like the door pockets should have a little bit more storage than they do. In front of that section, you have your six speaker audio system. And I will say in my experience driving this vehicle, it does feel like the audio is coming a little bit in front of you than around you. So that is one complaint I have about the audio system as well. But again, this is the off-road version of a work truck. Moving inwards, you have this cool looking air vent that reminds me a lot of what they use in like the Chevy Blazer and the Camaro. Uh, it kind of has this rotary style where you can open and close it and then you can move it various different ways. I like that touch. It's a cool looking air vent. And then moving above you, you have this hard touch plastic material all throughout the dash onto the passenger side. Now moving towards the steering wheel, this is a plastic steering wheel, although it does have fake perforated sections on the left and the right side to kind of imitate leather material but this is plastic and you cannot get a leather steering wheel on the trail boss and then the steering wheel is only tilt functionality there is no telescopic feature which is a little unfortunate uh, on the left hand side of the steering wheel are your controls for your cruise control by the way cruise control is not a standard feature on the trail boss you're gonna have to option for it and then there's an additional option if you want adaptive cruise control on the right hand side of the steering wheel are your controls for your voice activation your audio Audio, and then you have a button to go through your various instrument gauge cluster display menus. And I'll show that off in just a second. You also have your phone functions there as well. Now to the left of the steering wheel, you have your windshield wiper stock. And then to the left of that, you have your controls to regulate the brightness of the display. And below that is your trailer brake controller. So it's nice this vehicle has that. And this one of course has the tow hitch as well. Now let's talk about this instrument gauge cluster display. Every single Colorado comes with this eight inch display. And then you can option on the higher trims up to an 11 inch display display and it's pretty nice. I mean, it's got really good graphics, not too much functionality here. I mean, it's your speedo, your mileage, your odometer. I do like the off-road mode where you can see what your steering angle is, whether your transfer case is in four high, four low, your pitch, your roll, 
that is a pretty cool menu, but other than that, it's pretty simple overall. Also, there is a cool graphic when you get in the car and shut the door that integrates both your instrument gauge cluster display and the infotainment screen, and it'll have this big Chevy emblem that kind of floats across. Looks really cool. I'm glad that they have that integrated into the gauge cluster. And this is a big selling point of the Colorado because not all of the competition in the midsize segment have anywhere near this size of an instrument gauge cluster display. Now, moving towards the center, this is another standard feature on all Chevy Colorados. It's an 11.3 inch touchscreen display with wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto. It's really fantastic and this is one of the largest in the segment. I think maybe the new Toyota Tacoma coming out is going to be very similar in size and I love the UI. The software that GM and Chevy use in their vehicles is really top notch. Very snappy, very easy to use. It's incredibly quick at transferring through different menus and there's also Google connectivity here so you can ask it things like, hey Google, what's the weather tomorrow? Tomorrow in Garden, there will be thunderstorms with a high of 68 and a low of 47. So there you go. And it's like a smart home device, so you can ask it a variety of different questions because Google is integrated into this system. Now, one weird feature and something that's kind of controversial about this vehicle is, as you may have noticed when I was showing off the steering wheel, there is no button to the left of the steering wheel or on any of the stocks to control your headlights. And that's because Chevy decided to include that functionality inside of this infotainment screen. So there is this quick access button at the top of the infotainment screen that looks kind of like a light bulb. And you push that button and it will automatically open up your auto headlights off, on, or you can turn on your daytime running lights and then it will quickly disappear if you're not using it. And there is another way to access it. There are a set of quick access buttons on the left-hand side of the screen. If you click the vehicle looking icon, it will pull up your doors, windows, lights, vehicle settings. And from there, you can also control your cargo lights, your auto high beams, and then your headlights as well. Kind of an odd choice from Chevy. I really don't know if it would cost that much more for them to integrate it into the existing windshield wiper stock or the turn signal stock. And at the same time, I can kind of see their argument because you're probably always going to have your auto headlights on. So is it really something you constantly have to turn off and on? So I'm kind of a mixed bag on this. Now, another couple cool features here. You have a trailering app where you can test the lights on your trailer, adjust the brake gain and everything like that. You can also go into your off-road mode, which is pretty cool. And that kind of shows very similar information to what's on your gauge cluster display, your steering angle, your G-forces. You have three different modes, Baja, Terrain, and Overlanding. And the graphics here are really cool looking. So I like that there's a lot of functionality there and it also shows your longitude and latitude and your elevation so pretty impressive stuff there there's also something called air down mode where you can set a target psi for your tires and as you lower the tire pressure the car will honk when the tire pressure has been achieved so that's a pretty cool feature if you're going off-roading you can also pull up your camera very quickly it is only just a rear backup camera although the higher trim levels you can get upwards of 10 or 11 different cameras that include an underbody camera. So uh, definitely a class leader when it comes to that, but it doesn't come on the Trail Boss. And then just pretty intuitive map system and audio system, similar to what you'd find on some other GM and Chevy products. Now, what I do like about the screen is you do still have a physical volume button. Even though your headlight controls are in the UI, you do have a physical volume button. No physical tune buttons though. You have to kind of cycle through and swipe on the screen. And then the Trail Boss only comes with single zone climate control so below the screen you on the left hand side you have your fan speed on the right hand side is your temperature gauge and then in the middle is just where you can regulate where the airflow is going below that you have a set of two air vents and then underneath that you have these nice rubberized buttons for your auto start stop your hazards and your lane keep assist now even though cruise control is not a standard feature on the trail boss lane departure warning and lane keep assist is a standard feature and what that does is when you're on the freeway it will slowly gently nudge you back back into the center. It doesn't actually steer the car, but it kind of puts you back into the middle. So it's a nice feature to have. Below that section, you have a set of two USB ports and then a little shelf over here that would look like a wireless charging pad, but there's actually no wireless charging pad functionality inside of the Trail Boss. You can't even get that as an option. This is just kind of this camo-like rubberized material that you can put your wallet or your phone there. 
but it won't actually charge your device. And that's something that is a little bit unfortunate. I wish they offered that as an option. Moving backwards, you have this rubberized gear selector that feels pretty good overall. You also have manual functionality on the left-hand side of it. And then you have this little rotary knob where you can go through four different drive modes. There's terrain, normal, off-road, and tow haul mode. And the graphics are really cool looking. Now, it doesn't necessarily show you a trail boss. I think that's showing you either the ZR2 or the Z71, but it's still a very cool graphic interface. And this knob is also where you can regulate your four high, four low, too high and there's a four auto on this car which is pretty impressive not all the competition offer a four auto moving downwards you have your electronic parking brake then you got two cup holders with a little bit more of that camo and then a little compartment where you could just store your phone kind of vertically and that way it doesn't bounce around moving towards the center arm console a little bit more of that rubberized material although i'll say i wish they had this rubberized material on the door panel because it's a lot softer and more cushiony when you're driving down the road. Opening it up, you've got a little compartment here where you can store like a sunglasses or some keys. And then you've got a pretty decent size center arm compartment with a 12 volt power outlet in there as well so you can charge some devices. And then on the passenger side, you just have a glove compartment that's pretty large. It's not damped or anything like that, so it just falls open. Moving above you, your standard rear view mirror, there's nothing really cool about it, and then just your light controls. Now moving above you, your sun visor doesn't have a light and it doesn't actually extend. Another option that's actually missing from the Trail Boss and you can't even get is a sunroof. So if you want that, you're gonna have to option for the higher trim levels of the Colorado. Now let's talk about these seats. They're actually pretty comfortable. Now these are cloth seats with a little bit of black and some gray. Looks pretty good. This is the only seat option you can get on the Trail Boss. Now, the standard Trail Boss comes with six-way manual adjustable seats. My particular vehicle right now has the Trail Boss Convenience Package 2, which includes power seat functionality. So mine actually has eight-way power seats just for the driver's side. Passenger is still manual. Now, another thing to mention about these seats, unfortunately, you cannot get heated seats as a, even an option in the Trail Boss. You're gonna, again, have to opt for the higher trim levels. And you also, of course, don't even have a heated steering wheel. So if you live in colder climates and you want, or you're used to those features in some other vehicles, you're gonna have to pick something else aside from the Trail Boss. Now, I did take this vehicle on about a 150-mile road trip, and I gotta say, these seats are actually pretty comfortable. I had no complaints. I didn't feel sore at the end of my trip. Now moving into the second row, a couple things to point out. First off, the door panel is exactly the same, hard touch plastics, a little bit of trim pieces. And then again, not much in terms of storage compartments in the second row door panel. I mean, you just have a cup holder and that's pretty much it. I wish they had a little bit more space to store some things here and there. Now moving inside, you still have that same gray and black cloth seats and the seat cushion will actually lift up, giving you a little bit of extra closed storage space underneath. Now there is a plastic panel that outlines that storage area so you don't have stuff just rolling around in the back so it keeps things pretty secure but it is nice that you have that that's also where your floor jack is located and some other components now in terms of legroom climbing into the back uh, it's not bad it's very similar to other mid-size pickup trucks you're looking at about 34.7 inches of legroom behind the first row in terms of headroom you're looking about 38.3 inches now it's not the most comfortable second row seat but it's pretty much what you would expect. Uh, you could probably fit adults back there for a little bit of time. Longer road trips, I'd probably have to option for something a little bit bigger. I will also say climbing into and out of the second row, your foot may sometimes get caught on the B pillar because it almost rounds out a little bit when you're getting in. So your shoe will sometimes get hit on that. And so it's a little bit harder to get into the back, but it's not difficult by any means. You also do have a little center hump. So it's gonna be a little bit harder for five passengers to fit inside this vehicle. And then one thing that really surprised me is all trail bosses come with rear air vents in the back. That's something that my Ford Bronco doesn't even come with, but you do have that on the trail boss. And above that, you have two cup holders and a place to put your phone. I didn't see anywhere back there any type of power outlet or USB ports, which is a little bit unfortunate because a lot of vehicles are throwing that in nowadays. And then behind the second row seats, you have a manual adjustable rear window that opens up. So it's nice that you can pass through larger objects or just have a little bit more fresh air inside of the cabin. Now, another thing missing in the second row is a center armrest. Uh, you don't have that in this Trail Boss trim level and it's not even an option. All right, since we're in the driver's seat, let's get this vehicle started and see how it drives. Now, every single trail boss comes with push to start so that's a nice feature you just keep the key in your pocket push the button and the thing turns right on
Okay, so setting off in the Chevy Colorado Trail Boss. Do a little acceleration here. Okay, so we'll talk about powertrain and performance here in just a second, but first off, let's talk about the ride quality. So I've driven this car for about 150, 200 miles, and I will say it drives like a pickup truck. I mean, it's not much softer than all the other pickup trucks out there. I think uh, GMC creates some really soft riding pickup trucks with some of their Multimatic DSS V shocks and their AT4Xs. But this rides like a truck. It's got leaf springs in the back. There's no denying it. But I gotta say, it's actually a pretty soft riding vehicle. Comparing this to my Ford Bronco, this thing rides softer than that. There's no question about it. Driving over bumps, you know, you feel it, but it doesn't jostle you too much on the interior. And then in terms of interior ride noise, it's really not that loud. It's actually a pretty composed interior. Now, could it be a little bit quieter? Yes, but it's not an extremely loud ride on the interior. It's pretty quiet overall, pretty composed, and it makes for a pretty decent experience if you're taking this on a road trip. All right, so there's no sport modes in this vehicle. They're all off-road oriented or towing, but let's do a little acceleration here from zero stomping on it and we hit 60 um, you know Chevy says 0 to 60 in 7 seconds I think that's a little optimistic although I will say we're about 6,000 6,500 feet above sea level so that's definitely going to impact it regardless of whether you have a turbocharger or not that does make it a little bit harder to get up to speed now I will say I have a 2.3 liter four-cylinder EcoBoost in my Ford Bronco and that one feels a little bit peppier than this I think it gets up to speed a little bit easier especially on the freeway with passing power I can't say this is bad but it's not quick by any means. Uh, it's a decent engine. It's probably similar in terms of performance to their prior version V6 that they had in the Colorado. So here we are at 40, I'm gonna gas it again. And we hit 59 miles an hour. I mean, it's not bad. You know, I wish it was a little bit quicker. I think this thing is moving a lot of weight. And so because of that, and the elevation it's taking a little bit to get up to speed now i'm not sure exactly how the high output version feels uh, i'm sure it's going to feel a little bit peppier but to me this is probably the lowest engine i would pick in colorado's lineup i don't think i would go for the standard turbo i think that one might feel a little bit too underpowered and i will say passing power is actually pretty decent on the freeway if you're going 60 and you stomp on it I haven't had any issues passing people and getting up to 70, 75 miles per hour. So the turbocharger definitely helps with that. Now let's talk about some of the safety features in this vehicle or maybe lack thereof. So standard, you get seven airbags on the inside. You also get lane keep assist slash lane departure warning where this thing will actively track the lanes and then kind of steer you a little bit back towards the center if it feels like you're veering out of your current lane. It also has a collision alert system where if it notices that you're accelerating onto the car in front of you very quickly or somebody pulls out in front of you, it will flash this LED light over here on the windshield, this set of three or four different red lights that make sure you're paying attention and that you know you break in time. It does get a little bit obnoxious. It has gone off on me a couple times where there really hasn't been an issue and it almost scared me because I heard that sound but nothing was really going on. So that kind of happens with a lot of safety features. Uh, and then optional features, like I mentioned, cruise control is not standard, which is very odd to me because I just feel like Chevy should have either charged an extra 100, 200 bucks for the car and included cruise control or just included it outright because that's such a standard feature on pretty much every car nowadays. Of course, adaptive cruise control is also optional. Blind spot monitoring is optional. And then you do have an optional 360 degree camera. It does help when you're going off-roading or parking this vehicle in tight spots. So for the most part, you can option this Trail Boss with pretty much all the modern safety tech. Okay, now let's talk about the moment you've been waiting for and that is pricing. And that's really where the Colorado Trail boss shines. Now, first off, the Colorado with the work truck starts around $29,200 for the rear wheel drive version. The trail boss, wait for it, starts at $37,000, which is pretty impressive pricing for an off-road pickup truck. Now, this one in front of you on the screen has a few extra bells and whistles. It has that convenience package too on the inside, the power seats. 
And this one comes in around $41,095, but still a pretty affordable off-road pickup truck. Now you can option for the ZR2, that one starts around $46,800 and go up from there. And it can even reach over $60,000, especially if you choose the ZR2 AEV Bison Edition. Now in terms of reliability, it's gonna be hard to say because this is the newest generation of the pickup truck with an entirely different engine than what it had before. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this 2.7 liter turbocharged four cylinder has been used in the Silverado and I think it's been relatively reliable. So you can probably expect similar reliability to the Silverado. In terms of warranty, you get a three year, 36,000 mile bumper to bumper warranty and a five year, 60,000 mile powertrain warranty. And Chevy says it'll pay for your first maintenance visit at the dealership. So what are my overall thoughts on the Trail Boss? Well, it's a little bit of a mixed bag. There are some things I really love about this pickup truck, like the interior technology. You've got that 11.3 inch touchscreen, you got Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. You also got really great off-road capability with that rear locker. You got the extra inches of lift and it's a really attractive looking pickup truck. But there are a few features that are missing and not even available on the Trail Boss, like a wireless charging pad, like heated seats, or even a leather steering wheel. Those are things that I wish that they added as an option so that you could at least pay for it to get those creature comforts. At the same time, this is the budget off-roader that everybody has been asking for. I mean, every single review, everybody says, this is an expensive vehicle. I'm not gonna be able to afford it. I'm never gonna take this off-road. Well, this is your answer to that. This is an affordable off-road pickup truck that you probably will be able to take off-road and there's really not that much to damage on the inside or the outside because it's overall a pretty simple truck. I don't think the Trail Boss trim level is for everybody because if you need some of those creature comforts, you're gonna have to option for the more expensive trim levels like the Z71 and the ZR2. But for somebody who doesn't like those bells and whistles and just wants a pure off-road pickup truck, this is a fantastic truck for that. This isn't gonna be the best daily driver, but it is the vehicle you can take on like a weekend trail and have a lot of fun in it. Now, I am curious to see how the new 2024 Toyota Tacoma is going to compare with this because currently the Colorado is the newest. You also have a new Ford Ranger coming out, so the competition is getting very heated. So how will the Colorado compare to those? Well, we'll just have to wait and see. But let me know your thoughts on the Chevy Colorado. Would you take this over some of the other competition and why? Let me know your comments down below. And if you guys enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate it if you hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for all of the weekly car videos. Also check me out on all the social media at Shwayze underscore. Until next time, everybody, I hope you stay Shwayze, stay healthy, have a wonderful day.